Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to High World, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, I'm so excited about this show. My guest is going to teach you the missing message of Jesus. It's there. It is in the Gospels, but it's missing today. And that is, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And you, you see, you can't get everything God promises to you if you have a broken heart. And it's my conviction, in a broken world, with a broken devil, with broken people, how do you expect to have a healed heart unless Jesus Heals your heart. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you ever felt that something is wrong? <laughs> you don't know what it is. What a frustrating feeling. That's what happened to my friend John McTurnan. Uh, John, what was going on in your life? You're a believer. You're speaking before people. Uh, you, you, you're not supposed to have a problem, but you do. What's your problem? Sid, it's, it's internal and it's kind of hard to explain, but I felt a drag inside. I felt like a car going down the road on the interstate at 65 miles an hour. It had all sorts of power, speed, and yet it, it was holding back. There was a power drain inside of me. I could feel it. I knew something was wrong. I had brought it before the Lord for many, many years, and it just sat there. and I, It didn't go, and I had no idea what it was. Okay, so one day he's minding his own business, listening to a radio program, and the light bulb went on. What happened? Yeah, there was a woman being interviewed about, she was a psychologist, Christian psychologist, and she's being interviewed by her research on children of divorce and how every one of them, virtually every one of them, had a broken heart. And it, it affected them where they developed loneliness. That was an outstanding trait of a broken heart from a, a child from a divorced family. And it was like, bingo, my parents were divorced. When I was, I didn't even know them together. They were divorced before I could remember. And I began to think, and I'm saying, broken heart. Maybe that's what I have. And I sought the Lord on it, and I prayed. And I, and I, at that point, I didn't know I had a broken heart. And if you, Sid, had come to me, like we'll say, years before that, and you said, John, I think you had a broken heart. I would go, how? How would it be broken? I had no idea at all. And when I sought the Lord... Uh, you know, I'm reminded the Bible says the heart is the most deceitful thing. Here he is, a believer with a broken heart, and he's so programmed to operate with that broken heart, yeah. he doesn't That's even know it's broken. That's go exactly ahead. right, Sid. That's exactly right. So I knew Luke 4.18, and in Luke 4.18, that is the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we all know that he came to save us from sin, right? Right, of course. But it doesn't end there. When you look at Luke 4.18, it says, and he came to heal the brokenhearted, to deliver the captives, to open the eyes of the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. We stop right at the salvation message. But if you look in the Bible, there's a semicolon, and right after it, it says the Lord came to heal the brokenhearted. There are many other areas that someone could have a broken heart of. I, I mean, a divorced home, that's enough. But there are a lot of other areas, like what? Sid, rejection, especially with children. I have come to see it's much easier than we realize to break a child's heart. Their heart is very tender, and it's very easy to break a child's heart. But rejection, 
Um, death, death can really break a heart. Um, I have found with women, abortion, devastating with breaking the heart. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, the military with men, well, women in the military now also, but that, what they see and what happens can break their heart. They, and we call it like um, uh, post-stressed, um, you know, the trauma. And m much, much of that is really a broken heart. But you know what? J just the peer pressure of a young child going to school, and maybe they're not so pretty, and maybe they hear someone laughing at them. You say, oh, nothing. But in a child's mind, that's enough to do it. So what was the revelation you had when you started praying? My mother had remarried. Now, there is no way on my own I could remember this, because we're going back now to when I was six years old. And uh, my, my stepfather, and I don't think, I know he didn't do this to be malicious, really? but he approached me when I was about six years old about being adopted, and I had no idea what he was talking about. You thought he was your natural father? No, no. I had my, my father would come and visit me, and he was a big friend. I knew him as Joe. I, I didn't call him dad or anything. I knew him as Joe. And my stepfather wanted to block out my father from coming, and he talked to me about adoption. I had no idea what he was talking about. Finally, it dawned on me. I had like a revelation that Joe was my father, and this man was my really stepfather. And I remember I said to him, Would my name change? Can I still say Joe? No. You don't have my name. No, my name is John McTiernan. And I knew right then and there, the whole thing opened up. I understood everything perfectly at six years old. And I knew if I told my father, he would protect me from what was going on. It was a complete revelation but it broke my heart. Hold that thought. When we come back, we're going to find out what God did that so changed his life that people don't even recognize him. He doesn't even recognize himself after his heart was healed by God himself. But better than that, how about having your broken heart healed? Don't go away. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. My passion is for you to walk in divine health 24-7. That's why I handpick my favorite healing scriptures from many translations of the Bible, personalized them for you, and made them available in this free ebook. I want you to meditate or pray out loud these scriptures over your life daily and witness the supernatural healing power of God's kingdom come upon you. Download your free Healing Scriptures ebook now. We now return to It's Supernatural. I mean, what a devastating thing. A young, a young boy. Uh, the one that's been with him his whole life that he, he thinks is his father. And he, he knew his natural father, but he didn't know him as father. And, and his father brings him in, in the basement and tells him the truth. How old were you? I figured about six. And at six, what effect did it have on you? Uh, I, from that moment on, I did not want to live with my mother and my stepfather. I wanted to be with my dad. And it brought in, a, it developed that spirit of loneliness was deep within me. I had a, it was a supernatural spiritual loneliness. It brought a feeling of rejection in. It actually brought fear into me because I remember I was afraid he would try that again. And I never was, from that day on, I was never comfortable in the family. It de and it devastated me inside as a little six-year-old. And that was that problem. It broke my heart at six. And it carried over when I came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. You have the revelation that you have a broken heart. You now realize when it happened. Yes. You know exactly what did you do about it. I cried out to the Lord to heal my heart. And Sid, it took me with the Lord about two or three weeks of prayer. And I can remember laying in bed at night with tears rolling down out of my eyes with this feeling of loneliness and emptiness. And it got to the point where I, 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 I realized then that I know why 
a spouse will die like within a year after a, a spouse passes away. I've noticed that yeah, pattern. That loneliness, that real, that's what I actually felt. It felt like I was dying. That's how severe it was. And then I cried out and I said, Lord, if I die over this, then I go to be with you, but I'm staying and I'm believing you're gonna heal my heart. And literally I could feel it leave. Hmm. It like came like, like that. It just came like up and out. And that this sounds weight too came easy, off. John. Well, those two weeks, Sid, three okay. weeks leading up to it, <laughs> for me, was not easy. But the Lord delivered me. And it, I, I became a whole new man. And uh, but, that, but, that, that emergency break feeling came off. But what about that fear, the loneliness, the, the, what the loneliness you explained, but with the, re, the rejection, what about those things? I began to see how I operated in my life. One of the healing, one of the ministries of Jesus Christ is to open the eyes of the blind. And all of a sudden, I began to see, like now that my heart was healed, actions that I did to protect that heart, and also the way I interacted with people with the fear of rejection and not wanting to be rejected and things I said and things. It was a whole complete inner revelation. And I began to confess it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm not living with fear anymore. It was, I didn't even know it was there. So. I heard a man once say, God never sets you free of your friends. He sets you free of your enemies. <laughs> and he uh, knew, had no idea there was an enemy called fear. But this is the amazing thing. Once the heart is restored, then these other critters that are enemies, they literally have to go. That's right. Sir. It, it's That's so right. wonderful. But tell me, uh, when the Bible talks about the ministry of Jesus was to restore the brokenhearted, what does uh, the word broken mean in Hebrew? That's a real good question. And it's actually Hebrew and Greek really mm -hmm. mean the same thing. It means a violent shattering. The word, there's the word violent. Hmm. And it's like you had a, a, like this glass here. And I took it and I, I just didn't drop it, but I th threw it down on the ground. There'd be no way to it, restore that. It splinters apart. And that is what the Bible describes as a broken heart. And Sid, there is nothing human on this earth that can heal a broken heart. It can only be, it's a supernatural, and it can only be healed by Jesus Christ. That's his ministry. Tell me about the woman with, an ulc with ulcerated colitis. Well, what happened, Sid, is when my heart was healed, all of a sudden, I would come in contact with people. And I, in my mind, I would hear, I, I would look at you, for example, and I'd hear brokenhearted, brokenhearted. And I would go up to you very politely. I, I just didn't yell at you. I'd say, Lord. excuse me. <laughs> I'd excuse me, but I believe the Lord's telling me you had a broken heart. And people would start crying. And, and it was amazing. The Lord's putting people across my path who needed to be ministered to. So this ministry started to, de to develop, just happened when I'd see instant results. Sometimes the results would take a while, but instant results. And this one woman had a powerful spirit of rejection. And it happened when she was about five or six years old, just like you mentioned, rejected by kids. And it, it, all her life, this rejection just continued. Mm -hmm. She had two husbands that left her and they like divorced her on a Friday and then married another woman on a Monday. So, oh. and that, she was just, she had like a self-hatred of herself. And when I ministered to her about the broken heart, um, it was very hard for her to receive that God loved her because of her broken heart, even though she believed in the Lord. I know that this sounds weird, but that's what happens with a broken heart. Jesus was her savior. But the reality of calling God Abba Father, she couldn't do it. She said, I can't do it. It took a couple prayer sessions and she had ulcerated colitis where for about four or five years, she was in the final stage of it. I mean, it was critical. She was anemic, bleeding Thank severely. You. Finally, she got broke through with Abba Father. Her heart was healed. And at that point in my ministry now, what I do is someone has physical issues. When I pray with them for a broken heart, we also pray for the physical issue because a lot of times the, the physical issue is caused by the broken heart. Fear and anxiety and tension. So we prayed and her ulcerated intestines were healed right there on the spot. Once the heart is healed, the emotions get healed. 
The yes. physical body gets healed. Yes. John has even gone into mental institutions yes. Yes, in yes. hopeless cases. One of the most hopeless cases they had in a mental institution. Once her heart was healed, she was healed. But I'll tell you what, I want you, I want you to pray a supernatural prayer with John because this is what he found out. The gift is growing. It's the same thing you have with me. I started laying hands on people and they got physically healed. Then I started speaking it, not even laying hands, and they got just as healed. I'll have him pray for you when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. John McTurnan suffered from a spirit of deep fear and loneliness as the result of a broken heart he received when only six years old. Once his heart was healed, he discovered the key to unlock the blessings of Abraham in your life so you can fulfill God's destiny and purpose. Call now and get John McTurnan's life-changing three-part DVD teaching and study guide, Healing the Broken Heart to Walk in the Blessing of Abraham. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9222. Through this anointed three-part DVD teaching, you will understand what Jesus meant when He said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. Find out how to uncover hidden brokenness, which inhibits your access to supernatural deliverance, healing, and miracles. People who have heard John McDernan's teaching have received instant emotional and physical healing, were set free from all sorts of addictions, experienced the power and presence of God. Included is this easy to use study guide, which will walk you through every step of the teaching. It includes a place where you can write your notes and journal your healing and deliverance. Deliverance. Don't miss out on getting John McTurnan's life-changing three-part DVD teaching and study guide, Healing the Broken Heart to Walk in the Blessing of Abraham. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9222. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9222 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, we find out in the Bible very clearly about the amazing supernatural blessings that God has given to Abraham. But there's a tie-in between a heart being broken and receiving these supernatural blessings. There's, as like with John, there's a disconnect, and many people don't understand this. Explain that. Yeah, when our heart is healed, it puts us in a new relationship with God. It's like when you have an earthly father and uh, you're afraid of him for whatever reason, you, you shy back, you're afraid to talk to him, you're afraid to ask him. Well, with a broken heart, that can carry over towards our attitude, and God tells us to call him Abba Father. And those attitudes towards an earthly father, we can project towards God, but he's not like that towards us. So a broken heart can break the feeling or, or block the feeling of how much God loves us, how much he wants to bless us. And also the ministry of the Lord Jesus is to open the eyes of the blind. Right. So once our heart is healed, see, see, it's a progression, salvation, healing of the heart, setting the captives free, opening the eyes of the blind, and then setting at liberty them that are bruised. It's a progression of what God does in our life. So when our heart is healed and we're, we're set free, all of a sudden there's no blockage between us and Abba Father, and we believe that He'll bless us then. So very briefly, will you tell me, I mean, John gets calls from people that have loved ones in mental institutions. Tell me about one. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to minister to his sister who was a believer, and she has been in and out of the psychiatric ward for severe depression. She had been in there for, she's in her 60s. She had been in there now for three months, and I didn't know she was in there for three months. Uh, how, how bad was the depression? The, the doctor said it was the worst he's, he's ever seen. Hmm. They were thinking of permanently institutionalizing her. Oh, when I visited her I and I looked at her, said, if you could see no depression, way. that was her. I mean, you could like, cut it or touch her with I depression. Understand. And there's a Bible right next to her. So I began to talk to her and uh, she said, I've been prayed over and so many people prayed over me and I've gone to Christian psychologists. I said, did anyone ever pray for you for a broken heart? And she went like this and she said, 
no, never. I said, that's the problem. Never. Terry is her name. I, so we got into a background when she was 16 years old. She had a child out of wedlock. The child died and it, it ruptured her family, relationship with her family. That destroyed her inside. And she went on a path of rejection and depression into the psychiatric ward. Hmm. So Dude, we prayed and she we forgave what happened. She believed the baby died because of what she did. Then she believed God punished her by taking the baby. She had a grudge towards God. She had to forgive herself. She had to forgive her parents. When that all came and then we prayed, Sid, the greatest, for me personally, I think, miracle I have ever seen, her countenance changed. She, she had this glow to the point where people in the psychiatric ward were saying to her, what happened to you? you? You look so different. My friend said to me, you did like a magic act. His name is John. I said, what are you talking about? He said, that's not my sister. He goes, I, I don't know who she is. He goes, I've never seen anything like this from the depression to the joy. And they released her from the hospital and she now is leading a normal life when the whole problem was a broken heart. Okay, well you pray as God instructs for those that are watching because I know that this is what you've been crying out to God for. Yes, Father, we come before you in the awesome name of Jesus. And Lord, we bring the listeners before you and the key on their part is forgiveness, to forgive those that broke the heart, forgive themselves, and maybe possibly re be reconciled with you from a grudge. Father, once that's done, I pray now that in the name of Jesus, you take that shattered, broken, splintered heart and put it together, make it solid, make it one according to your word and bind it with the power and the love of the Holy Spirit, never to be broken again. And bring the healing that comes with that, Father, the healing from fear and depression and anxiety and rejection where we can call you Abba Father and walk in love with you. And then, Father, we ask for the flow as the heart is healed, Lord, that issues like high blood pressure, heart problems, uh, ulcerated colitis, Lord, uh, fibromyalgia, all sorts of things that are triggered by the tension inside, the anxiety inside, the fear inside, Lord, that your natural healing virtue would flow through their bodies and they'd be released and healed of these diseases and maladies. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Amen. Now, I can tell you this. There is a requirement in the kingdom. It came from our teacher, our Lord, the Messiah of Israel, Jesus, the anointed one. And this is what he says, I will forgive you to the same degree, the same amount that you forgive other people. So how much do you want God to forgive you, 95%? You say, I don't feel like it. I don't deserve it. Doesn't count. Meaningless. God says, if you confess your sins, he is just and faithful to forgive you of all unrighteousness. And unforgiveness is a sin that blocks the hand of God. Unforgiveness is taking the arsenic you want your enemy to take. Stop it. Come to your senses. It's an act of your will. It's not a feeling. It's not emotion. So don't tell me you can't do it. You can do it. You want to please the living God. There's no one else that you need to please. Please him. Tell him you choose to forgive that person out loud in Jesus' name and don't look back. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, does that mean you have to, to trust them? Not until they earn it. But you can forgive them. I'm telling you, you can. Because I have. And then ask Jesus to forgive you of everything you've ever done and say, Jesus, I make you my Lord. Come inside of me. Take over my life. I love you, Lord. And then I pray that you experience the tangible presence of the love 
of the living God in Jesus' name. God revealed to John McTurnan that deep inside he was suffering from a broken heart that was shattered when he was only six years old. He suffered from a spirit of deep fear and loneliness. Once his heart was healed, it radically transformed his life and ministry. When the Lord healed me, it was like a, a power surge came into my heart, into my life. It took me to a whole new level with the Lord. Things that had clung on to me spiritually with my heart healed fell off. He, I saw a whole new uh, understanding of the spiritual realm. Have you been praying over and over again, yet you're still waiting for your breakthrough? Is something blocking you from walking in the supernatural of God? John McTurnan has discovered the key to unlock the blessings of Abraham in your life so you can fulfill God's destiny and purpose. I know that you can't walk in this life without having your heart broken multiple times. I think everyone has a degree of a broken heart. Call now and get John McTurnan's life-changing three-part DVD teaching and study guide, Healing the Broken Heart to Walk in the Blessing of Abraham. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9222. Through this anointed three-part DVD teaching, you will understand what Jesus meant when he said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. Learn what things cause your heart to be broken. Find out how to uncover hidden brokenness which inhibits your access to supernatural deliverance, healing, and miracles. Get ready to experience powerful teaching, anointed ministry, and prayer that allows Jesus to heal and bind up the wounds of your heart. Many who have heard John McTurnan's teaching have received instant emotional and physical healing, were set free from all sorts of addictions, experienced the awesome power and presence of God, were given increased faith to believe God for the impossible, entered into an intimate relationship with God like never before. Included is this easy to use study guide, which will walk you through every step of the teaching. It includes a place where you can write your notes and journal your healing and deliverance. The most important areas to be able to walk in the blessings, all the blessings you read about of Abraham, are going to be point by point explained to you, but you will be able to do it for the first time in your life because you will not have the hindrance being pulled back something blocking all that God has for you because of the broken heart. Don't miss out on getting John McTurnan's life-changing three-part DVD teaching and study guide, Healing the Broken Heart to Walk in the Blessing of Abraham. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9222. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9222 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today next week on It's Supernatural. My guest was granted the privilege to see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob speaking to the Messiah of Israel about the end times. Mm -hmm.